In the grounds of Pentilly Castle, on the border between Cornwall and England, lies the oldest garden mausoleum in the country. A monument to Sir James Tilly, a rather scandalous man who in 1713 left a very unusual will. He had a reputation of, of having made a lot of money, um, one through marriage, but two but for being in the coinage business, which was producing counterfeit coins and clipping the edge of, the, of gold coins. He had bought his knighthood um, for £10,000, which was quite a lot of money in, I think, 1686. Um, but he didn't have the right to bear arms, so he just simply started using the, the arms of a German count called Tilly uh, until someone told the King, King James II about it, and uh, the arms were cut into four pieces and tied to the tails of horses and dragged through the streets of London. He left instructions in his will that he was to be not to be buried because he believed he would be resurrected. Now, I don't know anyone else who's done resurrection very successfully. One or two people, maybe. Mm. Just one I can <laughs> think of. He was to be wired to a chair so that he would stay in it and place in the building. The story goes that after a couple of years, his body had deteriorated so, so much that it was removed uh, and a statue erected in its place. But there was no account of where it had been removed to. We had to take the remaining stone flags off the floor because they were all higgledy-piggledy and a mess. And when we did that, we found very soon that there was a, a, the curve of a, a vault underneath the middle of the mausoleum. And sitting at the end of it were the remains of a chair um, and the remains of a, a, a person. And so I think it's a fairly safe assumption that it's Jimmy. We felt that best to leave him. That's where he wanted to be and that's where he still was. The thing I don't know is whether Sarah and Sammy are going to put me there, but I don't suppose it matters, <laughs> providing they don't bring the date forward too much. We gave the job to Clevedon in Bath, who specialised in, in, in the restoration of this kind of monument. And they came down here and surveyed it, and then they spent, it must have been nearly two weeks, um, dismantling it and, and going through the dirt on the ground and picking up every single little bit of fragment of, of stone. I think there are about 130, 140 pieces it was a fairly painstaking project putting him back together. We first had to clean all the uh, organic growth to assess what we had. We had the stones analysed to try and get the best match. We grew very fond of Jimmy while he was in the workshop. He had a certain presence. The uh, missing elements were then modelled in clay. We created the, uh, the new stone which was sculpted to match that clay. His nose was missing. Uh, his fingers had gone on both hands and this paper scroll had gone and his feet had, had completely gone, there were just the stubs there. But the shoes are very similar to the ones in the, uh, on the other statue outside the castle, so uh, we got permission from English Heritage to replace his fingers, feet and his nose. And I, I think it's, it was the right thing to do. It, we've left it so that it's an obvious replacement, but it's replaced with, with stone, so it'll, uh, rather than a, a modern material. And just looking at it now, you just can't believe the state that it was in and the state that it's in now. And it's just a, an extraordinary job. Mm -hmm.